Even though we have simplified the scrolling behavior to a particular timeline item in a previous lesson, we still have only one function which is responsible for scrolling the page to a particular timeline item, as well as to current timeline item. But it will be good to split these two concerns and create separate functions for each case. Let's consider the first scenario where we have to scroll the page to a current timeline item. And this happens inside the logo component when we click on the logo, we're going to execute function scroll to hour to scroll the page to current timeline item. And another scenario where we have to scroll the page to current timeline item is that whenever we are navigating to a timeline page from a different page, and the code for it we have inside of the timeline component, inside the closure or watch post effect function. So here we're checking the value of the reactive variable current page, and if this variable will be equal to page timeline constant, in other words, when we're gonna navigate to the timeline page, we're going to execute these instructions and scroll the page to a particular timeline item. But as we can see in both these cases, we're still using one function, scroll to hour, which is responsible to scroll the page to a particular timeline item, but not the current one. And although all this works, I prefer to simplify this code and make it more explicit by creating a separate function which will be responsible to scroll the page only to current timeline item. So let's go inside a timeline items module and in here let's declare a new function called scroll to current timeline hour. And the only parameter this function is going to take will be is smooth with a default value of true. And here we just have to delegate the behavior to scroll to hour function with the predefined parameters that will make scroll to our function to scroll the page to current timeline item. And to do that, we have to pass current hour as the first parameter. And by the way, current hour can be retrieved by using current hour function call. And as for the second parameter, we're just going to pass a smooth parameter further down to scroll to our function like this. And now there is actually no need to specify default value for the parameter hour inside the scroll to our function, so we can remove this default value, and since our parameter will always be passed from outside, we don't need to additionally assign current hour to the hour parameter, so this line is no longer necessary. Let's remove it. And now we have two separate functions that are responsible for concrete cases. The first case will be to scroll the page to the current timeline item, and the second case will be to scroll the page to a particular timeline item. So now, anytime we have to scroll the page to a current timeline hour, we're going to replace scroll to hour function call on scroll to current timeline hour. The first scenario will be inside the logo component, so in here we're going to replace this call on scroll to current hour function. And of course, let's also replace this import on scroll to current hour function. And the other scenario where we can call scroll to current hour function is inside the timeline component. So in here we'll replace scroll to hour on scroll to current hour and this function accepts only one parameter so we can remove first parameter null. So let's just go ahead and import this function inside this component and check final result in the browser. So while clicking on our labels we can see that the page gets scrolled to a particular timeline hour as well as it gets scrolled to current timeline hour when clicking on the logo while being on the timeline page. And there is one more case that we still have to check, and that is navigating to timeline component and making sure that we will be scrolled to current timeline item. As we can see, this behavior is also working. So our refactoring was successful. The link to the repository of this project will be in the video description.